matter how many people will rise against you, the name Jesus is your collateral. Hallelujah. Many people today, this ministry of a prophet, many people today just wake up and push it. Because you see, the ministry prophet must produce this out. They now go in the kingdom of darkness to get power. Because they want to prove. I prophesy, you get married. I prophesy, you find job. I prophesy. But they are prophesying by a lying spirit. They are prophesying by a deceiving spirit. True prophets of God live a holy life. True prophets of God live a righteous life. Turn to your neighbor and say, no matter how you cry, hallelujah. If Jesus is not your savior, that hallelujah cannot save you. Oh, man of God, oh, man of God, that does not save you. What saves you is your connection with Jesus. The whole nation came against one prophet called Micaiah. I don't like this man. The way he talk, I don't like it. The way he preach, I don't like it. He doesn't say anything good. He's talking about sin all the time. We are no longer comfortable in the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, it is the truth that gives life. Real life in Christ Jesus is sustained by the truth. Hallelujah. In a generation, there is not too often, not too many people. There are always a few what? People, few churches, few cities, few nations that are real and are godly. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 8. I want to show you one thing. Go to the book of 2 Kings. We want to finish. My preaching must not only be in persuasive human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the power of God. Amen. The king of Syria was at war with Israel. He consulted his officers and chose a place to set up his camp. But Elijah sent away to the king of Israel, warning him not to go near that place, because the Syrians were waiting in ambush there. So the king of Israel warned the men who lived in that place, and they were on guard. This happened several times. The Syrian king became greatly upset over this. He called in his office officers and asked them, which one of you is on the side of king of Israel? One of them answered, no one is your majesty. The prophet Elijah tells the king of Israel what you say even in the privacy of your own room. Find out where he is, the king ordered, and I will capture him. When he was told that Elisha was in Dota, he sent a large force there with the horses and chariots. They reached the town at night and surrounded him. Early the next morning, Elisha seven got up, went up out of the house and saw the Syrian troops with their horses and chariots surrounding the town. He went back to, the, to Elisha and explained, we are doomed to say, what shall we do? Don't be afraid, Elisha answered. We have more on our side than they have on theirs. Yes. Then he prayed, oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord answered his prayer. And Elisha seven looked up and saw the hillside covered with the horses and the chariots of fire all around Elisha. When the Syrians attacked, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, this man, O oh Lord, strike this man with blind. Strike this man blind. 
The Lord answered his prayer and struck them blank. Then Elisha went to David and said, You are on the wrong side. This is not the town you are looking for. Follow me and I will lead you to the men you are after. <laughs> and he led them to Samaria. As soon as they had entered the city, Elisha prayed, Open their eyes, Lord, and let them see. The Lord answered his prayer and he restored their sight and they saw that they were inside Samaria. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, It's impossible to fight against a child of God. A true child of God is secure in the blood of Jesus. Is secure in the name of Jesus. A true child of God is impossible. They may try. Hallelujah. Say, I have seen you. I have seen you. Say, I have seen you. I have seen you. Say, Jesus has seen you. Jesus has seen you. Say, you demon. You demon. Jesus saw you, Jesus saw you. Before, you me. before you attacked me. Jesus saw you. Say, Jesus saw you. Say, your covering is exposed. Remember, the Bible tells us that Elisha, the prophet, knew what was happening in the king of Syria's bedroom. He knew. Turn to your neighbor and say, Elijah and Elisha were true prophets. They did not have to go to Syria. Their God was the God of Syria. Now you wonder, I don't have to go. I have a God who is invisible. I don't have to be there, my God will be there. And he's peace texting the message. Watch out, Tom. Watch out what that's going to happen now. Watch out, Tom. Watch out, Tom. And Tom can act like he's blind, but he can see. Say hallelujah! Say glory to Jesus! The invisible God. I mean, as a Christian, you need not to be controlled by fear. As a Christian, you have power at your disposal. As a Christian, you must not be afraid. Turn to and say, as a Christian, you must not be afraid. Consider the story of David and Goliath. David says, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Not every Lord, but the God of Israel. Your situation is about to change. I say, your situation is about to change. I say, your situation is about to change. I say, your marital situation is about to change now. See, I said your situation is about to change. The chains around your life have been broken. I break the chains in your life. In the name of Jesus. I say I break those chains. I say I break the chains. I say I break the chains. Please receive your freedom. I mean, do you, do you see what's happening to you? I mean, are you seeing what happened to you? Maybe you were like the servant of Elisha. When he saw much trouble around him, he says, Master, oh, Master, they have surrounded us. They are all over. Elijah said, take it easy. Tell them, Master, take it easy. Say, take it easy. Say, take it easy. Hallelujah! Say, believer! Take it easy! Maybe your manager told you, 
God will fire you next week. Take it easy. Maybe you saw in the dream the witch has come to you. Take it easy. Maybe the doctors have said you are about to die. Take it easy. Maybe your wife is saying, pack your bags. Take it easy. You have a God more than enough. Hallelujah. You have a God more than enough. Listen, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, God presents himself as God more than enough. God more than adequate. I say be rescued in the name of Jesus. I say let your situation be rescued in the name of Jesus. I say let your marriage be rescued in the name of Jesus. I say let your finance be rescued in the name of Jesus. Please, I'm talking something. Listen to me. We are about to end the service. But power is evident. Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand to Jesus. Wave your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, son of David, you know me by name. Say, you know me by name. My situation is not bigger than you. Say, my situation is not bigger than you. In the name of Jesus, say, my situation is not bigger than you. Say, in the name of Jesus, say, my destiny, be rescued, be rescued, be rescued. Listen, for every trouble you are going through, there is always a bad spirit behind it. That is why a week ago, I was preaching about being in the spirit. This is where most of the churches are weak. We know how to preach the word. Turn to them and say, we know how to preach the word. But to walk in the spirit is a different story. Turn to them and say, we know the scripture, but we don't know the spirits behind the scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we can say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. But unless we are genuinely baptized in the Spirit, we can see. Do you know when you are here and we are saying out, you can see the demon living. Hmm? My daughter said, up. Come, stand up. Don't be afraid. Turn to your neighbor and say, cast away fear. You are. Which means you are in the flesh, you are not in the spirit. You must know it's me. Okay. On the day when I delivered you, while I was delivering you, what did you see? Um, what I saw is the battle between uh, Jesus and the devil. Wait, wait, number one. The first thing that you saw in the battle between Jesus and the devil. Was the battle between me and the devil? No. Give me a clap of a hand. If you are fighting me, I'm the wrong target. If you are throwing stones at me, remember there's Jesus in front of me. Before your stone, touch me, it must touch Jesus. Then you must consider whether Jesus is more powerful than your God or not. Give a clap over. That's the battle. Many people want to say, I want to fight for myself. I want to fight for myself. I want to fight. No, the battle is not between you and, and Satan. The battle is between the master of your life and Satan. Come, come, come. Like, you know, and they say I beat people in the in the delivery. They say I beat people like this. They say he's beating them. This abuser is beating them. Was I beating you? No. Who was I beating? The demon inside me. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, my hand, when I stretch like this, I only stretched 
It is not even me who stretched the hand. It was Jesus who stretched my hand. When he was beating you, the battle was not between you and me. Was it between you and me? Where we fight? Did you see me and you fighting? Did you see me beating you? It was Jesus beating the devil. You don't have the spirit. I give you a clip of it. If you know, when I was beating you, did you even feel the pain? Did you feel the pain? No. Tell the viewers, did you feel the pain? No. Because when one is under the influence of that demon, which means that demon has taken control of that person. It's no longer between the physical entities. It's now between the spiritual world entities. Jesus is a spiritual entity. Satan is a spiritual entity. What did you see again in your vision? On the day when I was delivering you, you saw the battle between Jesus and Satan. What did you see again? Uh, 
Satan appeared to me physically when I came to Canada. Uh, the day that I was in a shelter, it wasn't really, yeah, I was in a shelter and um, I was asleep. So for a few minutes, the enemy appeared to me where the demons tied me up and then, the, and then Satan appeared. What did he do to you? He... Don't be afraid, don't worry, mention it. He had sex with me. Did you see what she said? When she was sleeping, the demons appeared, the agent of Satan appeared, tied her up for Satan to come himself and make love to him in the dream. Many of you have dream where you are sleeping with somebody, you, you don't know this is Satan. No. When I was delivering you, the spirit was saying, my name is Lucifer, I am Lucifer. No pastor can deliver this one. Turn to your neighbor and say, they are pastors. They are real pastors. Yeah. My daughter, we are staying together, huh? Yes, pastor. Huh? Are you happy now? I'm very happy. Oh, yeah. Give a clap of a little more. I want you to know. So go and sit down. KG, just come here. Come here, my, oh my God. Hey. <laughs> my God. Because many people don't know you are an agent of light now to save the people of God. Because we, if we pray in ignorance, these people don't know. How are you, my daughter? I'm fine, Wow. So, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm free. You are feeling free. Mm -hmm. On the day when I was beating you like this, did you feel pain? No, Papa. Did, did you feel pain? No. No, no tell the people. Men are them people are saying, we are abusing people here by beating them and beating them and uh, uh, beating them. What, what do you say? No, I was not feeling any pain. You were not feeling any pain? No. Did you even realize? No. You only realized after. When you were watching the video, that this was what was happening. Hmm? And that he, uh, KG is very soft like this. But on that day, no, 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 no. I said, ah. Which means there was a spiritual entity that was fighting, trying to destroy your life. So tell the people now, my daughter, tell them. What was your experience then? What were you having? What, what was troubling your mind then? What were you seeing in your dreams? Uh, I was always seeing um, snakes. Sometimes I, I, was, I was seeing myself having sex in dreams. Sometimes I, I would see myself like, sometimes I just, when I wake up, in, a dream, in, in dreams, I, it will be like I'm um, coming out of water or something. You are coming out of water? Yes. They have put you in water, now you are coming. And some of the people you were having sex with, you actually know them? Yes, <laughs> Give a clap up on the Lord. They know it's, it's, it's real. Now, do you have any sex with anyone in the dream now? No. Give clap up on the Jesus. Yes, what can you say to the people here who are having dream and they call it a wet dream? What can you say to them? They say, I have a wet dream. They take it for granted. I have a wet dream. What can you say? It's not wet dreams. It's those spiritual husbands and wives. Give a clap of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take a seat, my, my daughter. Don't be, uh, don't be afraid. You are an agent of light now. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Please, do you want freedom? Yes. The Bible says faith works with an open heart. Do you want to be delivered? Faith works with an open heart. Many of the things you see, you are sleeping, anything. Do you know that before a person gets sick with cancer, 
the spiritual atmosphere around their life will get sick first. When the spiritual atmosphere gets sick, then it is when the spiritual atmosphere around you has been, been able to be corrupted that now you become what? Sick. Satan can never be able to enter and occupy and live permanently a born again believer who is working well with God. But whatever is true, hmm? Mama, you had a dream. Many people think dreams are just dreams. Come here. And many people don't know that under this, under the sea, there is a kingdom there. Many people don't know. But why did God say, I give you power? Power to tremble upon serpents and scorpions. And he says, I have given you dominion over all the fish and everything that is in the sea. If there was nothing. Mama, you had a dream, eh? In the dream, you had a dream and you rushed to me. Somebody was giving you money to buy a car, huh? Yes. Now, when we prayed, did the money come? Yes. Did the person say, pay for car? No. What did he say? He said, I'm sending you this money to buy a car. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give the demon of confusion out of you. I want to give that demon out of you. Oh, Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Do you see what's On the mind of someone? Do you see what's happening? I'm just talking to her now. And she said no. And she said the same thing. Do you see how certain control the mind of the believer? You know, I'm saying something and he is reversing what I'm saying. I'm saying this, you want to confuse you. Ah, Mama, we have to beat that demon out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he did not understand. Yeah, that is the spirit that is making you not to understand. Because you must be able to understand. So do you have the car? Yes, I have the car. Give a clap over. You see, the car started with a dream. Listen to me, the car started with a what? With a dream. Somebody having a money. And she believed it. She came, she says, I have had a dream about somebody giving me money. I said, it's up. that dream is real, it's from God. The person will send you the money. And after just a short while, the person sent the money and talked about car. What she has seen in the dream. And she's driving the car. Sit down, mama. God bless you. I want the people to know, because many people don't know. Many people don't want, don't know. Your spiritual life is more important than your physical what? Your physical life. Your business is spirit first before it is physical. Money is a spirit too. Hmm? Money has ears to hear. Hallelujah. That's why we prophets don't need to keep money in our pocket. When the time comes, I just say, I need money for this building. And the people say, ah, but the congregation is very small. Where did you get the money? We called heaven. We knocked the gods and we say, God send the money. And the money came. Now we want to correct the spiritual atmosphere around your life. Hallelujah. Every failure in your life, every disappointment, every setback, every delay, whatever the case may be, there is a spirit behind it. The Bible says, God, when he created everything, God saw that everything was what? Good. But while you were sleeping, maybe one day drinking beer you were sleeping, Satan came and sowed seeds of delay, seeds of disappointment, seeds of depression. You know, there are some people now in this congregation who are sleeping, you have to take antidepressant tablet 
for you to sleep. But the Bible says Jesus give, give good sleep to his people. You don't need those tablets. I'm giving you the tablet of tablets. The name Jesus is an antidote of every failure. It is an antidote of every disappointment. It is an antidote of every sickness. The name Jesus. Who is a child of God? Raise up your hand if you're a child of God. If you are God's son and daughter, raise up your hand and say, Jesus, you know me by name. Say, you know me by name. I am not a stranger to you. In the name of Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, son of David, you know my beginning. You know my ending. My life is in the hands of God. In the name of Jesus. Say, you demon of fear. You, you see? Ah! And people say, what's happening? Mama, what's happening? Ah! There is somebody trying to attack me in the dream. He has a knife. There is somebody coming to make me, to make love to me. But today you must overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Today you must overcome that failure in the name of Jesus. Today you must overcome that nightmare in the name of Jesus. Listen, I don't care where you live. We can enter into your home invisibly. We can enter that workplace and visibly through the name Jesus Christ to set you free. Your freedom is coming. 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 You see, we need an atmosphere of faith to connect with the heaven. Faith is like the key that can open every door. Faith is the master key that opens. God is real, God is evident, God is present, but you need faith. Say, I need faith. I need faith. I need faith. How many really want to see a change? Because I want to finish. Pray in your heart. You know, when I'm walking like this, I'm talking to you, I'm praying. No matter how many times I talk to you, I'm always asking God, who are you? Who are you? What is in your heart? What is in your spirit? What kind of a person are you? Ah, say Lord Jesus. I surrender myself to you. I confess I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. Forgive me. I want to receive the grace of God for my life. I sinned with my thoughts, with my words, with my conduct, with my heart. Forgive me. I know you died on the cross of Calvary for me and you rose again and you are seated at the right hand of the Father and you are Lord come into my heart come into my soul serve my soul serve my life in the name of Jesus rescue my soul rescue my soul say so you bad habit this has been a live broadcast from Christ Voice of Restoration Ministry. Thank you for watching. This is Voice of Restoration TV, television inspired to change the nations and the world.